When did you know SAS was the one? What was your work before? Will you be in Thailand for Christmas? Welcome, 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 welcome to a Q&A mukbang, I guess. Uh, I posted some questions on Instagram because I know you guys have some questions for me, some for SAS, and I know they're a little bit different, so I thought I'd kind of go through some of them and give the answers as best I could. And I grabbed some salami, some cheese, and I already had some pickles, cut them up, put it on a plate, Figured I could do a little mukbang and eat at the same time. First off, I'll let you know the salami I have. I got it from, what's it called? Italian Food Imports, which is, I've said before, one of the best sandwiches in Victoria, I think. And they also sell deli meats. So this one here is called oh, fr fr Fruland Salami. I know that's not the right way to say it, but F-R-U-I-F-R-I-U-L-A-N-D. And the middle one is like a spicier one, and that's Calabrese, which is not the correct way to say it, I'm sure, too. And this one's Prosciutto Salami, so I got more of that one because prosciutto is delicious. And then the cheese is a Taleggio, which is kind of like a brie kind of different kind of cheese. So let's go. I'm gonna try this one first. So some of the questions, I, I pretty much went through them and I was like, these are all amazing questions. So it was hard to kind of pick which ones to do. So hopefully I'll get through most of them for you. The first one that I saw, which I thought was good was, when did you, I have some of them written over here when you see me looking. When did you know Sass was the one and that you wanted to marry her? And when did you and Sass, oh, how long did it take Sass to warm up to you? Well, when we met, it's kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say it's one of those like things like you just, you just know right away. It's like, but you know, when you, you definitely feel a connection with somebody, like the first time you meet them kind of thing, that's, that's what it was. You know, it's like, it's one of those things, it's like, you meet someone and like, you just can't like stop thinking about them kind of thing. So, and then, I don't know, I guess, a while into it, you kind of know that things are go how it's going and stuff like that. and. I think we knew pretty quick, pretty early on. Um, what was your work before? I guess before she started doing YouTube and stuff like that. It's I've done lots of stuff, like basically a jack of all trades, like construction, electrician. I did graphic design for a while. We owned a business before. So just a general bit of, little bit of everything. I wasn't like into one certain field so you know it's I can still basically do all that kind of stuff and I do stuff around the house all the time so and I, I I like it and I even help my friends still if they need someone to fill in so um will you be in Thailand for Christmas sadly I don't think so I think with like with even though it is open, I just don't think the timing's gonna work out. And Sass will be back pretty quick after Christmas anyway, so it would be nice. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen this year. Next year, for sure, Christmas and New Year's, but I don't think this year. Um, have I watched Squid Game? Yes, I watched Squid Game. I watched Squid Game as soon as it came out, and I watched all of it right away like I, I i devoured the show i i think it's i think it's a good one i like it and i'm the one that told <laughs> sass to watch it she's like have you seen it yet and i was like yeah i watched it all <laughs> so <laughs> uh the other one that i thought was good was why are you removing your tattoo and are you going to get another one there um it's just kind of one of those things that's like 
it's one of your first ones and it just, I didn't like it that much. And it, it is very painful to get it removed, but it's kind of like, how much do you not like something? You know, so it's like, especially something that you see all the time. Like everybody else is always like, oh, it's great. It's, it's, I like it. You know, it's, it's not that bad to have to get it removed, but it's just kind of, if it bothers you, then it's worth removing for sure. So that's kind of where I am. And I will get something eventually, I think over it. I'm not sure what or when, but it, I will definitely fill that spot because it's, it's, it's one that needs it, I think. Um, oh, <laughs> this is a good one. How do you feel about Mr. Worldwide title we have all given you? I like it. <laughs> I think it's fine. I think it's funny. I think, I think it's, I think it's appropriate. I don't know. I like it. I thought it was good. I, I never, yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I guess that's, that's, that's about all I can say about it. Um, let's see here. Would you consider doing your own mukbang? Uh, I would definitely consider doing my own mukbang. Yes. It, this is almost like a, a little mukbang here. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat all this salami, but. Mm. Salami with the pickles. So good. I only thought of that just as I was like putting it on the plate. Um, so yeah, I would consider doing my own mukbang. I've done a couple ASMRs before for SAS and I liked it. You know, it's it's something different. It's it's definitely a learning curve, I would say. But I liked it and I would do it again. How long after Dating Sass, did you meet Sissy? And what was your first impression? Mm, it wasn't very long after we started dating. I don't know, within the first couple months, I guess. Like, we lived in different parts of the city. So it was like, it wasn't like we were always around the same kind of areas. And by the way, we met in Vancouver even though we live in Victoria now, where she was living at the time and I was living at the time, actually. So, you know, it was it was a couple months later, I think. And yeah, we, we all kind of got along right away, basically. Like, there wasn't any like, oh, we don't want to hang out or something like that. I don't know, yeah. Um. Has it been hard being away from SAS since your visa expired? Yes, it has. But at the same time, we talk like a couple times a day and we have FaceTime and, you know, we kind of knew what was coming when we decided on it. So it's not like it's a surprise. It's like, you know, it's, it's kind of, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of what we expected it to be when we made the decision that, hey, my visa is possibly going to expire. What should we do? And we knew. So we've been kind of dealing with it, but it's been okay. But it will be really nice, obviously, once she gets home. But I just think, like, people that, people that post and talk about, like, how can you be away for people from so long and stuff? It's kind of like, well, nothing's changed between us. So, you know, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem that different to me. Like it, the only difference is obviously not being together, but we still talk all the time. We still interact all the time. So it's, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's the same, but she's just not here and it will be nice when she comes home. I would love, have loved to have stayed, but we just couldn't have known what it was going to be with the visas and opening and stuff like that. And now obviously everything's changed. Thailand's open, but you just can't know. So it's kind of like you kind of have to go with what you have and go from there. So, um, what is your worst habit 
and biggest pet peeve. My worst habit is definitely procrastination. I, when I have things to do and I procrastinate doing them, it really bothers me, but I still do it all the time. And I don't know why, even though when I think about it, it's like, just do it. And I'm like, oh, I'll do something else first and then I'll get back to it. And it takes me forever to get back to it. And my biggest pet peeve is when people talk about doing something and they don't do it. You know, it's like when people are like, oh yeah, yeah, let, let's go, let's do that. And then you really plan on it and all of a sudden the time comes and they're like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, you, you wanna go? It's like, well, yeah, we planned it. Like, I'd say that's my biggest pet peeve. The talking about things and not doing it. That's a bad one. And people who just don't keep their word, it's basically the same kind of thing, I guess. You know, it's like you bank on something and you get all excited for it. And then, oh yeah, something came up and really nothing came up. They just don't want to do it kind of thing. So I'd say that's my, my biggest pet peeve. Did Sass's parents automatically like you or were there some complications with your guys' relationship and her family? No, we, we, we kind of got along right away. Like there wasn't, you know, there wasn't like anything in the way. It's not like her parents were like, oh, we don't like this person or like we were both adults when we met too, right? So it's kind of like she was, I don't know. It's just, I think it's just kind of different when you're like of a certain age. It's your parents are just kind of more like they're just accepting because well, you're a grown person who has your own job, lives in your own place, you know, pays your own bills. It's like, but even that being said, we all got along really well, even though my other question was, was there a difference like between like a cultural barrier and stuff like that? But there's not much I would say as a cultural barrier either. It's just kind of how people are and if you're, open and honest with people like we were we were super open and I'm super open and honest with everyone like when when Sass and I first met even like I don't know how long it was like it was pretty early on like within the first couple months probably even before I met her sister actually and I was like you know like when we first started dating we were together like all the time like all the time like I think she moved in on day two basically and just stayed in my place all the time. And I told her, I was like, you know, like, I'm not saying like that I see, like, I'm, I'm not putting this on you as, oh, you know, hey, well, this is my expectations. But I was like, we, I, I don't live in this city. I own a home in another city. It's just being renovated right now. So I'm here for work and I figured it was easy, but I, I don't plan on staying in Vancouver. So, you know, we kind of had like talks early on and like just being open and honest with each other, you know, that's instead of having like this expectation down the road of, well, we met here and what are we gonna do? And, you know, you try and work through things of course too, but at the same time, it's, I don't know, I've just always been open and tell people kind of what you think and it just kind of goes easier, I think, down the road. So, and that was kind of how it was with her family too. Even when we talked about getting married and stuff, we were just like, you know, we talked about it with them and we're like, oh, what would this work at this time and stuff like that? Because it was basically when everyone was going to Thailand, of course. So, you know, d does this sound like an idea that would work? And of course everyone was like, yes, that's great. But you know, it's just, just talk to people about things. So maybe that's why things were so easy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, another one is what book would you recommend? And it's like, man, there's so many books. It's like, I, I tried to like think about it and I was like, I was like, okay, I have to make a short list. I can't just like, I, I can't just pick a book and be like, okay, this is the book you should read because I don't know. I've, I've read a good many books, but the ones I definitely like are like 
sci-fi and fantasy and stuff like that. But I would say my favorite book series that I've ever read, it's a little bit of a build up there, would be The Gunslinger by Stephen King. Man, I think I've read that whole series like at least three times now, maybe four. And it's a seven book series and they're not thin books, but it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing series. It's one that I really liked. The first time I read it, I, I, it was like Squid Game. Like for me, it was like, I just sat and I would, I'd be doing things. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, I'd be cooking something. And I'd have like, I'd be waiting 10 minutes for something to cook. And I'd be like, oh yeah, it's not done. I'd sit down on the couch and read like three pages of the book while I'm waiting for something to cook. And it's just like, man, just all the time until I finished it. And it was, it's, it's a really good series. Another good series, The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan amazing i think they have a, i think it's amazon that's coming out with a tv show about it it's like basically a game of thrones would be the best way to kind of explain it i guess like that kind of lord of the rings kind of stuff which is another good series to read which i was going to suggest of course how could you go wrong with lord of the rings and another one that's not as well known i would say would be the hyperion series by dan simmons i think it's only like three books but that was one too that I read as soon as I started reading it, I just couldn't put it down. But if there's any, if any, if any of those click with people and you, you like those series, put in the comments, which ones you like, because I always want to know which series or books are good, but I know it's so hard to like tell because with reviews and stuff on Amazon, it's like, well, and then you start reading one and you're like, oh, like, why is this one so well reviewed? I don't know if, if it doesn't click with me within the first like three chapters or four chapters or something like that. And I'm not into the characters, then it's I, I just can't put my time into it unless someone's like, OK, you really got to get through the first. like honestly, a lot of people say that about the Gunslinger series with Stephen King is like you got to get through the first book because it's old. It was one of his first books he ever wrote. And it's kind of like, but I don't know. I started reading it and I was like, as soon as I started reading it, I was like, this is great. Like, so I guess everyone's different, but that one specifically, it just clicked with me and I didn't have to fight through it as some people I have read had. Um, and how do you feel in front of the camera without wearing glasses anymore? It feels the same. Honestly, it was, it was just, I don't know. It just, it just took a bit of time. And I'm definitely glad that I did because it makes it a lot easier. I don't have to like, if I'm out, I don't have to be like, oh, wait a second. That was one of the things like when we were in Thailand vlogging and stuff like that, it's kind of like, if you're inside some places, sometimes you're just like, oh man, like I gotta put my glasses on again. <laughs> it's kind of like, people are kind of like, you're sitting there at the restaurant and you're like, okay, just a second, I need to put my glasses on so we can vlog. Or when we're with Sissy and the kids and stuff like that. So it's a nice change. And I'm sure I still will be wearing them outside, but luckily right now it's winter time and it's dark here. So that's why like, if I'm vlogging outside here now, I don't need them as much. But it was kind of like, it's kind of like once you start doing something once and then you just kind of keep it up a little bit and you're like, well, now I feel like I kind of have to. You know, and you know, it's like, it's definitely a lot more comfortable sometimes, but I'm glad I'm over it now. and. Thank you very much for the support. I'm glad you guys like it better without. And that was pretty much all the questions I have. And you know, it's, if you guys have any more, I'd be more than happy to do another Q and A. You know, I, I know, I know there's a lot of different ones. Like I've seen other ones before, but I couldn't remember what they were from other posts and people were asking SAS and stuff like that. So 
if there's anything, post it. Maybe we'll do another Q&A. And definitely when Sass gets back, we'll do some more vlogs and have another Q&A with her. Because those are always interesting. I know someone was asking about more ghost stories too. I don't have any more ghost stories personally right now, but when she gets back, we'll do some more and we'll read some more. So thank you guys very much. I have a lot of meat to go save now and put back in the fridge and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.